boy, the deep state narrative on uh, everything is falling apart, especially COVID, everything related COVID. I've sent myself so many things to do video on that I just, I, I'm going to just have to summarize every little thing in one video. There's so much happening right now. And there was a, uh, so in Canada, somebody sued the, uh, I think it was Alberta, Canada. They sued the government because they said nobody to date, no government, no health agency to date has isolated SARS-CoV-2, which is the official name for coronavirus that we're dealing with. Um, so the government was basically forced, he, according to the lawsuit, to stop the mandate, stop the masks, basically put everything on hold. So it was like a major win for we the people. Uh, apparently, um, Ireland had to do the same thing, and I'm not sure that this was a uh, Recent, I think this was actually a few, couple, two or three months ago, um, and someone had said uh, the government in Ireland forced to deal with it the same way as uh, the guy in Canada forced the government. Um, I'll just leave it at that. Um, what else do we have here? Thailand cases in Thailand are up, and this is not a misprint. Nine hundred. 44,700%. That's right. 944,700%. Since National Ge Geographic said that they had, uh, quote, prevented coronavirus from gaining a foothold in the country. So even with a 93 to 95% mass compliance, cases are up 944,700%. And people are still somehow convinced these masks worked. I mean, this is incredible. And this data is from the World Health Organization, which I will show you because I know YouTube loves to... Oh, it's spreading misinformation. It's spreading COVID misinformation. Okay, hold on, hold on. Relax, YouTube. Relax. There it is. Source, World Health Organization. COVID-19 data, seven-day average. This is their chart taken from their, their site. And as you can see, it has absolutely exploded. This year, starting back in uh, June-ish time frame, and it's just out of control. 93% mass compliance, March. And it stayed down, March, April, almost to May, so you're almost two months there, boom. All of a sudden it starts peaking a little bit, oh, it settles down, oh, oh, oh. and then we have this. 93% mass compliance, however, back here, Way back here, last year back here, 95% mass compliance. Which is why they did the story, National Geographic. Oh, they, they stopped it dead in its tracks before it could even start. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of interesting. Oh, uh, what's this? Oh, this is interesting. Most Wanted, FBI, U.S. Capital Violence. If you recognize anybody in the photos, if you recognize anybody in the photos, and this individual is known as photograph number 50, A and B, you know who this is? That's this guy. Judge Emmett Sullivan's eldest son. His oldest son. Do you know who Judge Emmett Sullivan is? That's the same judge that refused to let the Michael Flynn, General Flynn case drop after the DOJ, which had exculpatory evidence, refused to show it. And finally, they just said, we're dropping the case. The higher-ups at the DOJ said, yeah, we're just going to drop the case. Just stop it. Judge Emmett Sullivan said, no, no, keep going. First time in the history something like this ever happened. And he would not drop the case. And Donald Trump finally had to pardon the man. Unbelievable. So if anyone wants to send the FBI, hey, we, we've got one of your guys. we got one of your guys. And I've also seen photos of one of the, f the four uh, Capitol Police officers that gave great testimony about what they witnessed during the insurrection. 
One of them is an insurrectionist because he's got a uh, full facial uh, picture of him. It's the same guy. Not only is it the same guy, there's a picture of him. I'm not sure what time the picture was taken. Standing next to, remember old Colonel Vindman that went after Trump and said, oh, I, I, you know, Trump committed treason. I was there. I heard the phone call. Or, uh, but then it turned out, no, he didn't hear the phone call. Heard it from a friend who heard it from a friend who heard it from another. You've been messing around. Oh, that guy. Yeah, him. These two jabronis side by side taking pictures together, like together in an in a office building. And the other guy, the pl Capitol Police officer, supposedly, is seen dressed up as a insurrectionist inside the Capitol building with Trump gear on. Huh. This is all coming out over the last two to three days. The deep state is in panic mode. The COVID nonsense is falling apart at the seams. Can I believe you? The COVID nonsense is falling apart at the seams. And this is an interesting picture. I mean, I'll just say it. <clears throat> Watch the water. <clears throat> Excuse me. U.S. Navy tweet. Marine Attack Squadron 211 conducts operations with HMS Queen Elizabeth RFA Tide Spring with support from the USS The Sullivans. Huh. Let's take a look at some of the pictures. Just cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweet. What else do we got? Oh! One, two, three. From small to large. One, two, three. Let me get my little nasty picture out of the way. Huh, what is that? That's interesting. That's an interesting uh, ship there. The, the uh, aircraft carrier. That's an interesting one there. Boy, it's got a very interesting uh, call sign or whatever, you know, insignia. Boy, that's interesting. Uh, what else do we got? Uh, another little side shot. Yep. Another one. Okay. And that's about it for that one. Oh, it's an interesting. Interesting thing that they just tweeted. When was this? Uh, August 3rd. Three days ago. Gosh. First comment, nice uh, letter on the deck, realist news, watch the water, interesting, again, just, just this is all coincidental stuff, by the way, it's just pure coincidence, landlord out $24,000 in rent due to eviction moratorium, says tenant, uh, the tenants are buying boats, North Carolina landlord, this is Fox News, landlord says he's out $24,000 in unpaid rent from tenants, while one renter bought three boats over the course of the eviction moratorium, just as the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention announced a new ban that will last until October 3rd, which, by the way, the CDC has absolutely no authority whatsoever, even kind of, to write and create its own laws. Not that I'm telling, not that I want to see people evicted from houses, because then we're going to have a massive homeless crisis of even far more epic proportions. But the bottom line is, is there a moratorium for the owners who may have a mortgage on those properties who have to keep paying their mortgage? That just keeps getting renewed. Or is this just a renter-only thing? It appears to be a renter-only thing. So these jabroni renters who have money, who didn't lose their jobs, well, I'm just going to take it up anyways. I'm allowed to not pay, so I'm not going to pay. I'm just going to go buy shit. We go buy boats. Three boats. Buddy Shoup, who owns 35 properties across the state, said that he has been forced to maintain the properties and hemorrhage costs while the federal government slowly dribbles out rental assistance, of which only 7% has been doled out to renters as needed. The money was used. They went and bought brand new boats. But I mean, you know, in a time of crisis like what we've been through, you're evidently getting money from somewhere, but it's not going to me, said Mr. Shoup. No, it's not. It's going to buy stuff. What else do we got? What else have I sent myself? Inventor of mRNA vaccine. ADE from COVID vaccine seems to have begun. I'm not sure. It's a video. I'm not even going to go over that. Dr. Robert Malone. Um, inventor of mRNA te technology. It's a very important video. Apparently, uh, inventor of mRNA. ADE from COVID vaccine seems to have begun. We'll see. Not sure. Uh... Israel. Let's move on to Israel. 95% of severe patients are vaccinated. 
85 to 90 percent of the hospitalizations are in fully vaccinated people we are opening more and more covid wards the effectiveness of the vaccine is waning and or fading out dr kobe haviv earlier today on channel 13 uh israel so israeli tv so let's you know just so you understand that i'm showing you real stuff real news from a real news website So that was the end of that, actually, just repeating now. Uh, probably nothing to see here. I mean, you know, not, nothing. 95% of the severe patients are vaccinated. 85 to 90% of the hospitalizations are in fully vaccinated people. This is in Israel. A news story by Le Legitimate News Corporation in Israel. Just reporting on the numbers and things. Are, statistics they're getting directly from the hospital. Make sure you wear your mask. 14 days, just 14 days to slow the spread. 14 days to slow the spread. Just one shot, just, just to get back to normal. Just two shots, just two shots in the booster. Just two shots in the booster and whatever the next variant's gonna be needed because you're gonna need that one too. Because the previous ones won't deal with the new variant. It, it morphed into a new thing. Yet nobody to date across the planet has isolated SARS COVID 2, the co coronavirus, current coronavirus. No one has isolated even the beginning of this whole thing, that virus. So I, I ask, how the hell does anyone know what a variant is? How do you know what the Delta variant is if you haven't even determined what the initial one was because you haven't isolated it yet? That is a fact. Did I mention Alberta, Canada? Did I mention? Uh, Ireland. They forced their governments to look into it and say, prove to us this has been isolated so we actually know there's a real pandemic happening with the real virus and it's called COVID-2. Show us where they separated this thing and found it and they have the basically the blueprint, so to speak. Nobody could do it. Nobody could do it. So what the hell's going on is what I'm asking. That's, that's a good legitimate question. Uh, what else do we have? Austin Star Police Detective accuses District Attorney Jose Garza's office with criminal witness tampering and high-profile case. Huh. Uh, I wonder if this DA was one of these George Soros kind of guys, you know, that was funded and, you know, voting machines and this guy, you know, all that nonsense where we vote and, oh, barely miss him, we'll get him next time, uh, 5149, uh, Austin Police Department homicide detective David Fugit or Fugit is considering considered to be a rock star when it comes to solving murders. He gets very tough cases. He's very, he is available to investigate because of his sterling record. Of all the cases that he has handled, he only failed to solve the cases. It says blank times out of fifty. I don't know what the, what the whatever assigned to him. He is now accusing Jose Garza, another oh here it is here it is another Soros funded district attorney of witness tampering and withholding exculpatory evidence from the accused. Where else do we heard about exculpatory evidence being withheld? Oh, Judge Emmett Sullivan, the DOJ. Oh, that's right. Austin has been plagued by BLM riots with drivers being pulled from their cars and being beaten in reports of gunfire uh, aimed at drivers from the rioters, not to mention their attacks on the dwindling numbers on the American or on the uh, police force. Austin City Council and Mayor defunded police at, in that city. That has sent crime spiraling through the roof. That brings us to a case where a driver had a BLM member pointed a loaded AK-47 at him. He then shot the, the, and killed the rioter. Garza actually ran on a platform to become the DA of prosecuting police officers. He had the BLM vote locked in. 
On the night of July 25th, 2020, a group of protesters illegally took over an interstate, blah, blah, blah. So he, this guy defended himself, shot the guy, killed the, the protester because he says the protester and witnesses showed the protester did show, point the gun in his direction. Um, so now the lead detective in the Perry case is accusing District Attorney Garza of witness tampering in order to obtain the indictment. That detective is David Fugit. The veteran APD officer known for solving so many cases, he has filed an affidavit in the case that clearly and unequivocally points the finger at Garza. And he says, prior to the grand jury presentation in this case, I had several conversations with the district attorney's office regarding the presentation of exculpatory evidence related to Daniel Perry. It became clear to me that the district attorney's office did not want to present evidence to the grand jury that would be exculpatory to Daniel Perry and or to show the, that witness statements obtained by the family of Garrett Foster and or their attorneys were inconsistent with prior interviews such witnesses gave the police and or the video of the incident in question. I had also wanted to present previous statements from the complainant in count two where she never once suggested that Daniel Perry intentionally and knowingly threatened her with Im imminent bodily injury by driving a motor vehicle in her direction. The district attorney's office also made me remove an animation from Daniel Perry's driving that night of the incident coordinated with his cell phone records that would have refuted the deadly conduct charge ultimately resulted re uh, returned by the grand jury. On more than one occasion, I was directed by the Travis County Attorney's Office to remove exculpatory information that I had intended to present to the grand jury during my testimony. At that point, I specifically asked if there would be ramifications if I did not do so. I was told by Assistant District Attorney Guillomaro Will Gonzalez that he would ask the elected District Attorney, Jose Garza, what would happen if I refused to agree to the limitations I was being ordered to comply with. I was later sent an email simply reaffirming the exculpatory subjects that I was forbidden from mentioning during my testimony. Of my original 158 slide PowerPoint presentation, the presentation was re reduced to just six, 56 slides with almost all of the exculpatory evidence ordered removed. I felt like I did not have any other options but to comply with their orders. Perry's defense attorneys have now filed a complaint against Garza for witness tampering. It is a crime that carries a maximum sentence of 10 years in prison. Recently, one of his prosecutors resigned from her job and filed a Brady notice against Garza. Prosecutors must turn over to the defense all exculpatory evidence they have and that is covered by the Brady law. She says that Garza ordered her to hide exculpatory evidence from the defense. The Austin Police Association says it's looking into 283 cases in which Garza's office may have tampered with evidence. So I wonder if it's, is it 10 years maximum per offense? Give that son of a bitch life in prison. So that's happening right now. Uh, what else we have? Oh, this is fantastic. Here's your favorite Democrats telling you what they think about vaccines, whether we should take them or not, yada, yada, yada. Check this out. Here we go. From last, just as early as last year, when Donald Trump was in power. Here we go. It's going to be a very skeptical America taking the vaccine, and they should be. We can't. I think it's going to be a very skeptical American public about taking the vaccine, and they should be. We can't trust the president uh, and take his word and take a vaccine that might cause harm to us. If and when the vaccine comes, it's not likely to go through all the tests that needs to be and the trials that are needed to be done. Let's just say there's a vaccine that is approved and even distributed before the election. Would you get it? Well, I think that's going to be an issue for all of us. When we finally do, God willing, get a vaccine, who's going to take the shot? Who's going to take the shot? We will need to have access to the vaccine results so we can make our independent assessment to make sure that Donald Trump's uh, fingerprints are not on it. You can be the first one to say, put me, sign me up. They now say it's okay. Is the vaccine safe? Uh, frankly, I'm not going to trust the federal government's opinion. 
And I wouldn't recommend to New Yorkers based on the federal government's opinion. And the question of whether it's real when it's there, that requires enormous transparency. Would you trust that vaccine? There's very little that we can trust that comes out of Donald Trump's mouth. We cannot take for granted this process will be free of political influence. I don't trust the president, and I don't trust the FDA. If Donald Trump can't give answers and the administration can't give answers to these three questions, the American people should not have confidence. You're going to say to the American people now, here's a vaccine, it was new, it was done quickly, but trust this federal administration and their health administration that it's safe? I will say that I would not trust Donald Trump. Hey, how confident are you in the approval process of the FDA right now? How confident am I? Uh, I'm not that confident. Yes, I would be hesitant, but I'm going to ask a lot of questions. You're going to need someone other than this FDA and this CDC saying it's safe. You've got to make all of it available to other experts across the nation so they can look and see. So there's consensus this is a safe vaccine. Uh, what I'm worried about is that there's some sort of October surprise and that there is a pressure put on the decision makers here to announce the vaccine in October of 2020. We're going to put together our own group of doctors and medical experts to review the vaccine and the efficacy and the protocol. And if they say it's safe, then I'll go to the people of New York and I will say it's safe. But if Donald Trump tells us I should t- that we should take it, I'm not taking it. So there you have it. Black and right, white, in your face. And uh, I'll even give you one, one bonus. I'll give you a bonus on my way out. Smith County Affidavit, FBI agent exposed himself to juveniles in Texas, Louisiana, and Florida. Tyler, Texas, an FBI supervisory special agent based in Louisiana, allegedly exposed himself to multiple multiple children, molested one child in a period from 2018 to 2019, and the alleged crimes took place in Florida, Louisiana, and Texas, according to a Smith County Affidavit. The suspect in the case is 51-year-old David Lee Harris of Prairieville, uh, Louisiana, in a previous story by WAFP or WAFB, excuse me, said the allegations involve underage girls. During a previous court hearing, prosecutors said Harris threatened at least one of the victim, victims if she said anything. In Smith County, Harris, an FBI special supervisory agent, has been charged with third degree felony indecent exposure. The Smith County affidavit was obtained by a Texas Ranger. Um, Senior Special Agent told the Texas Ranger that the report had been received concurrently by the DOJ OIG and the United States Army Department of the Army because Harris was employed by both FBI and the U.S. Army at the time of the alleged offenses. The recent WAFB story stated Harris is assigned to the FBI field office in New Orleans. Nolens. The story also said he had recently been appointed. Here he goes. You son of a bitch. He has recently was recently appointed to head up a regional division of the FBI that investigates. Go ahead. Guess what I'm going to say next. Guess what I'm going to say next. Go ahead. Online crimes against children, including child pornography. He was being set up, appointed to head up a regional division of the FBI that investigates online crimes against children, including child pornography. This is the FBI. By the way, I wonder if this guy was president at uh, present at Sandy Hook, uh, Orlando Club, Pulse nightclub, Boston Marathon bombing. I'm just curious if this guy was a president at all the present at all those things. It would be interesting to know. Um, there's more to this. There's a lot more to the story, but I, I've given it to you. There's our there's our FBI. Hey, I got my best guys on it. Just like the the number two fifty photo I showed you earlier of Judge L uh, Emmett Sullivan's youngest uh, eldest son, who was dressed up as a Trump supporter, supposing an insurrection on January sixth Capitol building. There he is. His picture of him inside there now. 
Everybody retweeted it. I retweeted it to the FBI. Everybody, hey, hey DOJ, FBI, here you go. We found one of the guys. We found one of them. We want our we want, uh, John here to help. Wants his 100K reward. 100K reward leading to the uh, you know tips on these guys. There you go. Their reply. I'll give. I'll give you their reply. What they probably would say. We got our best guy on it. Oh, wh what's his name? What's his name? Uh, David Lee Harris. Just been promoted. Handle online crimes against children. Got our best guy on it. Take care.